Still under caution in New Hampshire, our UPS track fact, 13 NASCAR Winston Cup Series races on this mile oval, and the Jeff and Jeff show have won over half. <laughs> and only two drivers have won more than one time, Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton. We have a new leader, Sterling Marlin. That's the race back to the caution flag. The black car up there in the back is Kyle Petty. Jeff Gordon slowing down, trying to let Kyle get a lap back, and Sterling wasn't having anything of it. So much for that gentleman's agreement. Cost Jeff Gordon a, a spot. That's the easiest the 40 car will pass Jeff today. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get for trying to be a nice guy, right? Ricky Rudd and Dale Earnhardt Jr. have been back on pit road, and Rudd was too fast coming into his pits, so he's got to go to the end of the line on the restart. Not a big deal. He was there anyway. <laughs> That's right. But he and Dale Jr. making extensive chassis adjustments here. Saw a lot of guys. Saw Jerry Nadeau changing the spring rubber in the right rear of his car. So this morning, that 45 many, many practice they had, it was something, but it wasn't enough, obviously, with all the adjustments we've seen on a lot of these cars. <laughs> Sterling Marlin only took two tires on his last pit stop. Jeff Gordon got four. Let's see how long that plays out. Jarrett, Bobby Labonte, Mark Martin, the top five, then Ward Burton, Rusty Wallace, Tony Stewart, Johnny Benson, and Elliot Sadler. Got the rest of the top ten. And Sterling's got a Sterling's running that line. He's kind of diamond the racetrack. I think that's why Tony Stewart was having so much trouble with him earlier, because he was leaving that hole down there on the bottom. But then he comes back down to the bottom like he does right there. So it's gonna be real tricky for Jeff or anybody to get underneath them far enough before Sterling comes back down on top of them. And I think we're going to see a lot of these cars doing that. Watch as they go down the corner and let the car drift up right in the center. Jeff Ford is starting to do that. That's easier on the right front tire. You're not turning that wheel and making that car stay on the bottom of the racetrack. Therefore, not putting quite as much pressure on that right front. Sterling Marlin is the leader. Dave Burns is in his pit. And Lee McCall stands by with me. He is a crew chief for Sterling. Those left side tires are going to have some laps on them. Are you concerned about them at all? No, we're uh, really not. The uh, left sides look really good during practice, and uh, track position is so important here that uh, we chose to take the track position. Uh, car's really good. We were a little tight on that first run and freed him up, so uh, we'll see how this run goes here and uh, just from there. What did your right front look like, Lee? It looked pretty bad. <laughs> all right, big concern down here on the right side, guys, but the left sides they think can go. Well, you know, but when you change just right sides and you don't have those new lefts, that puts more pressure yet on the right sides. And the 40 car, Sterling Mall, is a car who blew a tire in Phoenix, remember? Unscheduled pit stop, Terry Labonte. You're right, Benny, because what, what happens is you don't have the left side tires gripping, helping the right side tires. So you're exactly right. Those right side tires are going to be taking all the force going through the corners. Look at the brake dust <laughs> just in a few laps of Terry Labonte's run. He obviously felt something he didn't like. He was about mid-pack on the backstretch, and he bailed out and came to pit road. So Terry goes a lap down. Fourteenth and fifteenth place, Dave Blaney and Jason Leffler racing for that. Trading a little paint here. Watch this. Blaney in the 93. And here's what we were talking about earlier. 93 is working down really, really well. Down in the bottom. He tries to make the pass on the 01 car, but the 01 car comes down like he's running the same line Sterling. And Terry Labonte maybe ran over something from that. Maybe something had knocked off one of those cars. Could be. Because he thought the report we're getting from Pit Road, he thought he had a right front going down. They all think they have a right front going down right now. Right now they do. You know, I... I with this racetrack's uh, the reputation is the word that's coming to mind, but it's not the one I necessarily want to use, but the things that have happened at this racetrack. This is the place where Adam Petty and Kenny Irwin lost their lives in head-on crashes in the wall. Throttle sticking on those cars is the suspicion, but does that knowledge affect a driver when he's sitting here thinking that maybe there's a right front issue at this racetrack? Yeah. 
you're really you're not thinking about that. These two guys aren't thinking about that right now. They're, you know, like I said, it's in the back of their mind that there's a tire problem. But there's nothing you can do about it. You got to go out and do your job and run hard. As you see Jeff Gordon take the spot from Sterling Marlin right there, which I think this is what we're seeing on the tire issue, BP, is that the four tire thing's got to be better than two tires. But anyway, you you know, it's not something you can't do anything about it, Alan. You just got to go out and run hard every lap. You just keep the fingers crossed that you don't lose that right front tire. Ricky Rudd, Dale Earnhardt Jr., 33rd and 34th places, Bill. Yeah, and that's a long way from where they started up front, Alan, but both had problems with their cars, had to spend time on pit road. For Rudd, what they were doing when the car was on pit road was cutting the rear sway bar loose so it would not affect the car any longer. Michael McSwain, Rudd's crew chief, told me the car was just way too loose. Ricky made three stops, stayed on the lead lap, but fell back deep in the field. As for Dale Earnhardt Jr., his car also very loose, so they made an adjustment to the right front shock. Both these guys started up front and now have to work their way back in that direction. Cut, did he say cutting it loose or just unhooking the rear bar? Uh, they cut it. They used a saw down there and got underneath and cut it, Wally. Why, why would they do that, Bill? Because I know a lot of times you, can, you know, they can just unhook one side. Do they have a problem with unhooking that bar? I, what I'm assuming, and it's very loud down here to try and find out exactly, but what I'm assuming is that's what they went under there to do and because they had the hammer and they were under there working on it and I don't think they could get it. So when he came back in, then they went with a, uh, an electric saw to cut it loose in there. I'll be darned. Those refined adjustments they make to yeah, race cars. Well, that'll do it. That, you got to get it done. You yeah, only got a lap to do it. Yeah, and a hammer was involved too, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back and update what happened to Terry Labonte a minute ago, Marty. Well, Alan, you and Wally were talking about the psychology that these drivers go through. Several drivers on the track are reporting they feel like they have right fronts down, and that's what Terry Labonte said. He darted on the pit road, they took all four tires off, put four new ones on, but the four they took off were fine. They were all up on air pressure, so sometimes these drivers talk themselves into thinking that the right front's going down when it's actually not. And, and this is a racetrack, too, that if you get out of line just a little bit, there's, there's a lot of little marbles on this racetrack. So you, the car will take off. And once that car takes off, there again, in your mind, you got a tire problem. Uh-oh, I better come in. And these cars are running so low air pressure on the rear. You can see the left rear right on the center of the rear tire, how it's trying to, it's so low in air pressure that you see where it's trying to wind, unwind itself, trying to come off the rim. Let's go back and look one more time. This is a lap. We saw, we saw the 93 and the 01 bump together just in front of Terry. This is one lap later. And here you see Terry probably, actually Terry got into the side of the 01 car pretty hard. So I can see where he may be concerned about damaging that right front tire there. All right, there you go. That was pretty hard contact. Terry is in 41st place. A lap and three quarters down to leader Jeff Gordon. Another thing about the, uh, Terry's car, he may have bent something there, which maybe the car is not feeling right in the corner because that was a hard hit. So I'm sure that car's the toe or something is out of alignment and it doesn't feel right. It's Casey Atwood in the 19, Kevin Harvick in the 29, and they're racing for 13th place. Check that 14th spot. Boy, Atwood has moved up great from the start of the race. He took the green flag 32nd. <laughs> 70 laps of 300 are complete in the New Hampshire 300. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Jeff Gordon is the leader of the New Hampshire 300 and our aerial views courtesy of the United States Army and Army of One. Log on now to NASCAR.com and play the Autotrader.com Move of the Race sweepstakes. Your chance to win a $25,000 shopping spree on Autotrader.com and other great prizes. Speaking of moves of the race, watch Dale Jr. As he tries to get around Bobby Labonte, goes to the corner. Bobby Hamilton, the big sorry. dummy. Sorry. <laughs> I got one in. Thank there you go. a long time. <laughs> This is for seventh place, Rusty Wallace, Tony Stewart, and Johnny Benson. 
220 and 10, respectively. And right behind them, how about the race of Elliott Sadler so far in the 21 car? Red machine there at the tail end of that group. Started 18th. Just chipped his way forward. Winner at Bristol back in March. Talked to Pat Trost, the crew chief on that 21 car this morning, and he said he, he thought that they had a very good race car, and obviously that would be the case. Michael Waltrip has just come back from the garage area. 47 laps down. Michael involved in caution number one of this race at lap 32. Right front went down, and he hit the turn three wall. I bet you they got some camber out of that baby now, BP. They do, too. Tough way to end the year. Coasting around 47 yeah. laps down. Yeah. And, and it's hard to be out of the way here. Yeah. You got to run the high line. And all of a sudden, Rusty oh. Wallace is just in the way. And he goes up the racetrack a little bit, and Tony Stewart just dove to the inside. This is bad spot. Rusty's got to get down. Oh. Careful, well, careful. he tried getting down. <laughs> you got to get down, or you're going to get past just like that. Nothing you can do. Good run for Robert Presley in that yellow car, the 77. He started 21st. He just took 10th. Last ride in that car for Robert. And Rusty Wallace is not. Right now, the car is very, very slow. It's like something is wrong with it. Well, like I said, don't forget, BP, we may get a shot of it in the corners. There's a lot of rubber, rubber and marbles on the outside of the groove here. And if you slide up into that, it takes about a lap or maybe even two to get your tires cleaned off. See all that garbage up there? Boy, that sticks to the tire. And when you go back down into turn one, it feels like you have no traction. Dave Blaney in the 93, another spot on Rusty Wallace. That's 11. Dave, Rusty's back to 12. Alan, I just checked in his pit. Nothing at the moment, although they're talking to him right now. And I, uh, I thought I heard him say he might have a vibration, but he hasn't said anything before that. So up until now, he was just taking his lumps and moving back. Lumps it is. Yeah, car looked, well, a car there by the in-car in camera looked like it was a little bit tight there, the way it pushed up in the middle of the corner. On board with Rusty. Way up the track. That looks a lot tight. <laughs> and we can see, check his RPMs as he goes down the backstretch. He should turn about 9,000 RPM. Well, it was. Oh, 9,200. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This is, that might be the most RPMs I've ever seen in a NASCAR Winston Cup. Man, we're ready when you are. Just take care of your stuff. They're coming in. 9,300 RPMs. And the cars are so fast. That's what some guys at the garage here this morning was talking about. Not having enough gear on the truck to get down to the RPM they wanted because the cars are running so fast here with this tire that's getting such a wonderful grip. Softer tire brought to deal with the colder weather than they were normally getting in September for this race. But it's turned out to be not a bad day at all. Temperature around 50 degrees. Now, we're getting there. I gotta ask the mathematician. We're about the 30 lap mark, aren't we? 30 lap of green. So Last stop at 51. But remember, not everybody stopped. Right. Right. They threw the green flag about 55. 29, 30 laps ago. So. Dale Jarrett having a good day, running in third spot. Let's take a ride with Dale. See. This car looks like through the corners. We know it's fast in a straightaway. See if he turns the 9,300 RPMs. Oh, 9,400 RPMs. Wow. He stayed down on the bottom a little bit better than Rusty was. Tell you what, I talked to Dale this morning right at the conclusion of that 45-minute practice. He was not a happy camper. He did not feel they had a very good handling car. Did a tremendous amount of work on this UPS car to try to get it ready to be a good car, and so, so far they've succeeded fairly well. It's third place car. Todd Parrott, the crew chief, talking to DJ. Report over the NASCAR radio. All the crew chiefs are being told at lap 95 there will be a yellow flag. So. We will have a yellow again. 
So NASCAR not taking any chances on the tires. We'll get Wally and Benny's opinion on competition cautions, if you will, when we come back to New Hampshire after this.